Hello and welcome to our daily devotions here on the Doncaster Methodist Circuit YouTube channel. We welcome you in the name of our risen Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We were talking yesterday of some of the key words of the pandemic and we remembered that mindfulness is one of those key words. We also noticed that my watch is getting in on the mindfulness act. Every morning as my day begins, it pings on my wrist. And when I look, there is a message saying something such as, even a moment of focus as you begin your day can make a real difference to the rest of your day. When I press on the app, it gives me a different subject every day to focus on. So I thought this week you might want to join me on my mindfulness journey. What's happening is I, I tell you what my watch is suggesting each day to, for us to focus upon and then we'll ask my watch to give us a minute as we indeed focus on that subject. So remember yesterday, if you were with us, that we thought we'd get ourselves comfortable wherever we're, we're seated. Let's make sure that our feet are planted firmly on the ground. Become conscious of our breathing and then what my watch has thrown up today is this recall a challenge you've overcome looking back what's one thing you have learnt from it okay so just to repeat him recall a challenge you've overcome looking back What's one thing you have learnt from it? So we're just going to focus on that for a minute. One minute. One minute, starting now. When I, I read that word challenge, uh, it, it reminded me of how helpful I found it. Uh, when in one of the books I, I read last year, uh, the author said that the language we use when we are facing something makes the world of difference to our state of mind. So when we think of something we are facing, do we use a word such as threat? Or do we use a word such as the one that my watch came up with this morning. Challenge. Which word we use makes a world of difference to a state of mind. For if we only think in terms of threat, that is a word that can lead us to believe that we are not equal to whatever it is that we are facing. We feel that we are going to fail. We start to feel overwhelmed and beaten. And yet, if we think of the thing we are facing not in terms of threat, but of challenge, then that word has such a, a more positive feel to it. Rather than making us feel overwhelmed, it encourages us to look for the opportunities, which are always part of every crisis, uh, as we already know. I think with the things I've faced over the last couple of years, my mind has started to see threats rather than challenges. And I think I had started not only to feel overwhelmed, but actually to be overwhelmed. This same book that pointed me in the direction of looking at things as challenges rather than threats, also spoke of someone 
whose mindset was changed after she received a message in a dream. That might sound fanciful, but you know, it happened to me just after Christmas. I wasn't asleep, I, I, I was coming out of sleep. But as I started to wake up, I started to hear a message coming towards me as I started to come back to the surface. And the message, I believe, has brought me back to the surface in more ways than one. It was such a clear message that I wrote it down in my phone and I've recited it to myself so many times since. I don't think it would be appropriate for me to tell you what the exact wording of the message was, although I have re rehearsed it in my mind so many times since 27th of December. The gist of it though was to remind me of who I am and what I have been equipped to be and to do. In an instant, I was transferred from a world only occupied by threats to a world occupied by challenges. I wonder if you have ever considered this comparison before and asked yourself how you routinely approach the things that you face uh, and what difference it makes to your state of mind to consider them either as threats or as challenges. I believe that message which came to me during the early hours of the 27th of December came from the Lord. This is the same Lord who has given us such a promise in Romans chapter 8 and verses 28 to 38. These wonderful words. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in our creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Amen. So I thought for our closing prayer today, we might have the, the words of a, a wonderful hymn through all the changing scenes of life. I'll, I'll read the, the words of the hymn as our closing prayer, but it may be that on whatever platform you use, you, you might just want to play the hymn. But for now, here are the words. Through all the changing scenes of life, trouble and enjoy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. Of his deliverance I will boast till all that are distressed. From my example comfort take and lay their griefs to rest. I magnify the Lord with me, exalt his holy name. When in distress to him I called, he to my rescue came. The hosts of God encamp around the dwellings of the just, 
deliverance he affords to all who in his promise trust. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Experience will decide how blessed are they and only they who in the Lord confide. Fear him, you saints, and you will then have nothing else to fear. Make serving him your sole delight. Your ones shall be as care. Amen. And now, until we meet again tomorrow, Wednesday, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the dwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. So, see you tomorrow. Bye for now.